Hello, my name is Dr. Rick Powell and I am the Section Chief of Vascular Surgery at Dartmouth-Hitchcock Medical Center in Dartmouth Medical School. I will be discussing strategies to develop a successful academic career as a vascular surgeon who is also a basic research scientist. As the amount of knowledge expands exponentially and areas of investigation become ever more focused, there remains a vital role for the surgeon scientist. The surgeon scientist is in the ideal position to use the basic science laboratory to answer the most clinically relevant questions. This position can have a direct impact on patient care. While the knowledge of clinical relevance is an advantage for the surgeon scientist, the impact of clinical duties on available research time can disadvantage the surgeon scientist as compared to his PhD basic scientist colleagues. Areas that I will cover over the next several minutes will include training, mentorship, research environment, and collaboration and the need for protected time and laboratory support. To develop an academic career in vascular surgery requires the time commitment to build a solid foundation. Individuals who have developed successful careers as surgeon basic scientists have undertaken extensive training for typically two years, either during general surgery residency or during the vascular surgery fellowship. This period of time should allow for adequate in-depth training in the chosen area of investigation. It is important to emphasize that many different areas of investigation exist, not only vascular and molecular biology and animal models, but also biomaterials and bioengineering. In many instances, successful research programs are built on combining expertise from each of these fields. The most important factor when choosing a training program is mentorship. Having a committed mentor who has a genuine interest in the success of their trainee is critically important. Questions to consider when evaluating a potential research program and mentor include, is the mentor a recognized authority in the field? Do they have NIH funding? Importantly, do they have an established track record in the field? A prime example of an outstanding mentor is Dr. Alec Clues at the University of Washington. Many trainees from this program assumed leadership positions in basic vascular research throughout the country. A proven track record assures the applicant that the needed tools are present to put together a solid foundation for a basic science research career. Once training is completed, the budding surgeon scientist will then need to find a faculty position. Probably the single most important attribute when choosing one's first faculty appointment when training is completed is the environment. Without a suitable environment, success will be difficult to achieve regardless of the amount of institutional support provided. This environment should contain adequate research space and equipment to complete the proposed studies. This needs to be clearly stated and agreed upon prior to arrival. More importantly, an ideal environment will also have potential collaborators. Success in obtaining funding in the hyper-competitive world of NIH funding requires the applicant to develop not only significant but also highly innovative projects. As a surgeon scientist, developing a project that addresses a clinically significant problem is the easy part. Developing an innovative project that will potentially have a high impact in the chosen field of research frequently requires collaborations between researchers with multiple areas of expertise such as a biomaterials, molecular biologist, and animal models experts who together can create project that may approach a particular problem in a novel manner. Again, a proven institutional track record of developing young faculty into mature scientists is important. Questions to consider include, are intramural grants available as seed money to develop preliminary data? How many assistant professors have obtained KO8 funding? What percentage of young faculty who have pursued an academic career in basic science continue to have running laboratories after five years? Are there opportunities to obtain a dual appointment in a basic science department? Are there opportunities to have graduate students rotate through clinical department laboratories? At Dartmouth, we have a program in experimental molecular medicine that allows for graduate students to obtain their PhDs in clinical department laboratories. Next in importance is the need for protected time for the new surgeon scientist. This is frequently the biggest obstacle faced early in one's career. After completing a vascular fellowship, frequently the new faculty is eager to develop a clinical practice, and this will be at the expense of developing a successful academic career. The initial years in one's career are the most important. 
The goals during this time period should be to develop collaborations, obtain preliminary data, and begin to submit grant proposals. A minimum of 50% protected time and preferably more needs to be set aside to do this. There could be no coverage issues during the protected time. At our institution, faculty are listed as away during their protected research time. Most new faculty positions will provide the applicant with two years of protected time before expecting that extramural funding will begin to cover future protected time. It is vital the new faculty uses this short time period to get their research program off the ground. Once this is achieved, then gradually they can incorporate more clinical time into their schedule. Lastly, it is expected that the institution should also provide a stipend for the research laboratory that should include funds to cover a research technician. Although this process may seem daunting, surgeon scientists are critical to advancing our understanding in the treatment of vascular diseases. This briefing is made possible by a grant from Cook Medical. To learn more about vascular health careers, visit vascularweb.org.